All right, good morning, people of YouTube. So this time we are back again today with an update for Beale Star. I figure it's only fair since this is the other deck that I was considering taking to my store championship. Um, this is a deck that I've put a lot of work into and I'm very comfortable with. And I think the adaptations that I have made to this deck make it more powerful into the meta um, at the sacrifice of just a little bit of consistency. But the main problems that Beale Star had into this meta is if you missed a couple of pieces, it was very hard to catch back up when your opponent gets ahead. Um, and the other issue is if you just can't get your options in trash fast enough, uh, you just kind of fumble in the mid game, and then your opponent just kind of outpaces you and just wins. Um, and I think that the changes that I have made to this deck make sure that you get more cards into the trash more quickly at the cost of getting a couple extra cards into your hand with uh, cards like the Gabumon from uh, BT2. But with, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get into the list. I'll explain some of the choices that I've made. And uh, if you guys could, please make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel out, especially since we're so close to 1,000 subs. But uh, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get into the deck profile. So, for the win conditions of the deck, we got four copies of Beale Star and two copies of Death X. Um, these are the cards that are going to close you out all of your games. Uh, Beale Star says it gets one cheaper to hard play for every seven cost option in your trash, and whenever you play, you get to fetch an option, a seven cost option back, and then cast a seven cost option. So this card provides massive tempo. Um, it'll typically swing games into your favor either by casting Nailbone and flooding the board or by casting Giant Removal. Um, so it's just an amazing card. And like I said, this deck loses if you don't get cards in your trash fast enough. So this deck is optimized to do that, so that Beale Star is coming down turn two or three for very cheap. Um, next we got Death X. Death X is just pivotal in controlling wide boards, and also taking care of some of this deck's worst matchups. So... Absolutely love this card. I think you can't play any less than two of it. You can evolve this over Beale Star, get your same effect. And also, since it's a purple card, you can grab it back with cards like Dobermon and Calling from Darkness. So this card is always live whenever you need to see it. But going on into the rest of the cards that create the backbone of the deck, we have the seven cost options. Um, I feel like putting these on the table first will help people that don't know what this deck does understand a little bit better. Um, but it also saves time for me to explain some of the more interesting card choices in the list. So, we have four copies of Fly Bullet and four copies of Cassidus Breath. These are our best forms of removal. Um, most Beale Star lists you will see will be playing four copies of each of these cards, and I agree with that decision. Um, these are just the ones that you want to be playing most of the time to just eliminate boards. Next, we got two copies of Happy Bullet Showering and one copy of Jawalt Schwarmer. So, a lot of people aren't playing two Happy Bullet, but... A typical weakness for this deck is D-Reaper, but since this deck is a little bit faster, you kind of mitigate that matchup a little bit. But Happy Bullet and Jawalt are the only cards in this deck that affect D-Reaper, um, because everything else is level-based. So for that reason, I bumped Happy Bullet up to two. Most people are only playing one, and you still have the one Jawalt. It's a, just a great card. You should be playing it in every iteration of Beale Star. Finally, for the last seven cost option, we got three copies of Nailbone. This card is busted. You, I was playing two in past formats. However, with it being an OTK-centric format, you need to be upping this card to three, so that way you're seeing it. Um, and also, you have the opportunity to drop double Nailbone in the mid to late game. So that is a play that comes up very often, and uh, Beelstar has access to it because you play three copies of this card. So going on to the Rookies. This is where we start taking the deck and making it unique, making it our own, and making it faster, in my opinion. We got two copies of Gazimon X Antibody with three copies of regular Gazi. Um, so these cards are good. Gazi's always going to be good for stalling out um, decks that need to gain a lot of memory off of their boost. Decks like Alphamon, uh, Gaiomon, things like that. Um, so that playing at least three of this is necessary. You also have the Gazimon X Antibody. You can slap this card on top of Gazimon, just get some more mills. Um, it mills three when you do that, and that's kind of insane. So, lets you draw an extra card. 
this card is always a viable target to pull off of Calling of the Darkness, and typically um, that's what you're going to be doing. You're either going to be getting one of these three cards back off of that. So the Gabumon that most Beale Star lists are playing four copies of, I am playing one. Um, this is the one that has Inheritable Draw 2 Trash 1. So the reason I'm only playing one copy of this card is because this card only puts one card in your trash. Sure, it gets you more cards in your hand pretty quickly, and that is great. But um, there are better cards at getting more cards in trash, which is what this deck would rather be doing. Sure, you can get cards in your hand, and sure, this card can pitch specific seven cost options that might be clumping in your hand, um, which is why we still include one of it. You know, if we have seven cost options that continue to clump in our hand, we can grab it back off of Calling, and that's always nice, but I've only ever needed to see one, and I do that to make room for the, the main engine of the deck. Uh, the four copies of the BT2 Impmon, and the four copies of the EX2 Impmon. So, EX2 Impmon has an on-play skill that you look at four, you grab I and Mako and a Beelzemon card, I don't play I am Mako. I don't play Beelzmon. Um, I was trying a list that did play both of those cards, and it was a lot of fun. Um, it was very high rolly. This deck is kind of the sweet middle ground between a high rolly build and the consistent package. Um, the main reason you're playing this card is because if you mill it, you mill three additional cards. So let me paint a picture in your head, right? This is the ideal turn one of the deck. So you have your eggs, right? You got your four Pokemon and your one Demimara. Um, You hatch the Pokemon most of the time because it's the one you play four of. This has an inheritable of uh, trash two cards from the top of your deck. The ideal opening is you open this Impmon from BT2 that says on deletion, you trash three cards from the top of your deck. So you get the your raising area set up, you get this Pokemon with this Impmon, and then you activate uh, Darkness Wave, milling three cards. Um, you mill three cards off the Darkness Wave on your next turn, you promote the Pagu and the Impmon, um, and then you swing security, you mill five more cards. You have milled eight cards off the top of your deck. Chances are one of those cards was this EX2 Impmon, and you are milling an additional three cards. That's 11 cards milled. Um, and that's, that's pretty good. Um, a lot of the times you'll be hitting multiple seven cost options this way, multiple cards that you want to get into your trash that way you can pull them back later. Um, and for that reason, I am doing I'm doing this package because purple oftentimes utilizes its trash as a second hand. And this helps you build that second hand super quickly. So all in all, I am playing 14 rookies in this deck. I think that's great because this deck wants to play an aggressive rookie rush style with a security control kind of type of backbone. Um, and this allows me to do just that. So we got these 14 rookies, you know, the four Pagumon and the one Demi Mera as our eggs. Um, I am doing five eggs because I still want to hit Demi Mera at some point. Because when you get into the mid game, you will have at least one seven cost option that you do want to discard. Um, so you do have Demi Mera to help you get there. So... Going on into the level fours, this is the kind of the bread and butter along with our rookies. We got three copies of Dobermon and two copies of Eismon Scatter Mode. Uh, these cards help us set up our trash very well. Uh, Eismon Scatter Mode will put two cards in your trash while getting you some cards into your hand. And Dobermon will let you mill three cards, uh, give you a chance to hit this Impmon again. And then you get to return a purple Tamer, uh, which we don't play any, or a purple Digimon from your trash to your hand. So you can grab. Um, the same Dobermon back, you can grab Scatter Mode, you can grab X Antibody, uh, you can grab Death X or Beal Star. Both of those are viable targets. Um, Dobermon is absolutely insane. You're never going to evolve either of these cards off of the BT2 Impmon, but all of the other rookies are basically fair game. Um, and I, like I said, if you can't open, um like the Darkness Wave, because that is the ideal play. Like, the ideal turn one is the Impmon plus the Darkness Wave. But if you can't open that, and you open one of these other rookies plus one of these level fours, then the ideal play would be to evolve a rookie, and then evolve into a Scatter Mode or a Dobermon, so you can start setting up your trash and getting uh, your plays going that way. So, these are the best level fours in the deck. They set up all your plays. Uh, but we do have a couple more. 
We got our obligatory one blocker to pull back off a of Nailbone, being the Vilemon. We got our obligatory rush target, being the Genkaku Promote. And then I have an additional rush target for the double uh, Nailbone plays. I have a copy of Black Gatomon. Um, so this card is also kind of cute whenever you can just keep it on board and then trigger the secondary effect off a of Darkness Wave since you have a yellow Digimon in play. Um, but also this is a, just a five cost to hard play with Rush, so that will come up sometimes, but not often. But you do have two Rush targets. You want to get one in the trash as early as possible so you can start pulling them back for with Nailbone and then swinging. Um, and that is how you're closing out stocks at the end of the game, so... This is my level 4 package, and uh, we play no level 5s in the deck. The only level 6s is the Beale Star, and then the only level 7s are the Death X. So that's it for the Digimon. For the rest of the deck, we have the options that aren't 7 cost. We got 3 copies of Calling. Uh, this is our recursion piece. It gets us back anything we want, really. Um, so it's pretty nice. You know, playing 3 of it ensures that you see it. Because uh, you can kind of play one or two of all of these other cards and mill them and then not see them. Um, as long as you hit one of these at some point in the game, you can start pulling back the pieces that you really need. Um, this card and Dobermon basically ensures that we can mill ourselves to death uh, with, no, with no regard. And uh, yeah, it makes the deck much more consistent. Next, we got the three copies of Darkness Wave. I really want to make room for four copies of this card because it's just the ideal turn one. Plus, it's just at any point in the game, if you see this, you can just mill three additional cards. There are a lot of times that, you know, I'll turn one Darkness Wave and mill one of these and then mill six cards for one memory, uh, passing them one and then having any rookie on top of the Pagu um, is very, very nice. So I think the, uh, the best I ever did was I did the Impmon on top of Pagu I did a Darkness Wave, and I milled an EX2 Impmon, and then whenever I promoted the BT2 Impmon on my following turn, I swung with that, milled another EX2 Impmon, and then activated a Darkness Wave, and then milled a third EX2 Impmon. And I had like 25 cards in trash at the end of my turn two, um, or I'm sorry, at the beginning of my turn two, because I'd only spent the one memory. So... That was pretty insane. I think I was able to drop a Beale Star on turn two for like four or five memory, um, which is just kind of unheard of. And that's what this deck has access to since you're playing so many mill cards. Um, and then the last cards in the deck, we have the two obligatory blue tamers so that we can activate uh, Kasaitis Breath. We have the Kiroshiro Higashimitari. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, this card can let you draw extra cards, which is nice, but mostly it's just a memory setter. Um, memory setters are good, and we need a blue one so we can play Cassidus Breath, because that card is busted. So, that's all I gotta say about this deck. Um, yeah, as long as you can get a couple, like, either a Darkness Wave, a Scatter Mode, a Dober, an Imp, um, or any of these rookies, or, you know... Like, one of 30 cards in the deck by turn one or two, you're not going to lose. Um, and that's kind of how this deck feels a lot of the time. It's just got a great offensive and defensive backbone, and it feels like it can play out of almost any situation once it has at least 20 cards in the trash, uh, which you are doing by turn two most of the time, as I have said. So I think that's all I got to say. Uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe, all that jazz, and we will see you guys next time. Bye, everyone.